You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Here is a complete video of a maker set from start to finish. If you want to skip ahead to specific points in the video, then check the description below for skip times. Enjoy! Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop, and we're moving on to the next oven in the Easy Bake series. This one is uh, the Kenner's Premier Model Easy Bake Oven uh, with Betty Crocker Mixes. We're having this one, we're actually putting this around 1969 in this color. Now, there's other colors of these ovens, but from the first one from 1964 to 1969, uh, these are the two designs. So this is the next design, and I think in the early 70s is when they go to an even different design. So we'll show you that oven in another video. So let's check it out. And not much more on the side of the box. It's just kind of giving you complete with three slide-through baking pans, kitchen utensils, mixes and cookbook. Realistic, beautifully styled. It's quick and easy. Baking time, 4 to 16 minutes. Betty Crocker cookbook tells how. And then uh, let me flip it to the back. Or it could be the front because it is pretty much exactly the same. And then, uh, except this is in a different language on this side. You notice that? And this side panel, the same thing, different language. And then the top of the box kind of neat. Let me just see if I can tilt this down. So just more information. Uh, but just kind of seeing the colors here. Bake your cake and eat it too. Easy bake oven. Has enclosed oven and cooling chamber and three slide through baking pans. While one pan bakes and other cools, slide in third pan which pushes others through enclosed oven and cooling chamber. So it's very much like the first oven. So let me uh, tilt this back up and when we come back I'll have it out of the box and uh, show you the oven in more detail next. Okay, so here we go. Here is the oven, and as you can see, different styling in the front now that it's in front of us here. There's an opening here. Now, when I first showed us, I didn't realize that this opens, and there was some vintage like heating pads in there. It looks like someone made. I thought they were pretty neat in color and pretty neat in design, so we're going to keep those, and I'll use them later. I thought they were a little bonus that we found in there. And then uh, the knobs in front, the knobs up here don't do anything. Uh, but the window is really nice. This one doesn't open. And then like the other one, uh, the other one had a wire piece on the outside. This one has a flat tray. So it does make it nicer to hold the trays when they come out to that section. So there's an improvement. And pretty much the same thing here on this side. Same with the supplies. Now the book. The, I've seen different books with this particular version of and that had Betty Crocker on the front. So this is what was in this box. So it may not be original to it because they show the oven we've shown. So I don't know if it's a crossover or before they printed the new booklets they used up what they had. It could very well be what happened. It's laid out a little differently than the last booklet. Um, but we have recipes. Yes, that's what I'm excited to get to. And I promised chocolate cake. So I'm going to do the cake. And we did the snow mounds. This crazy cake, I don't know about that one. Not too sure yet. And possibly the oatmeal fruit bars, because that sounds interesting. So I'll get to those recipes in just a second. So now you've seen the oven. Got the three trays ready to go. I think from here it's me just uh, getting the ingredients. We'll start with the chocolate cake, and uh, we'll get going. Okay, here we are all set. Got the ingredients set aside so I can mix my chocolate cake. I did notice that they don't give you any frosting directions or recipes. Um, the bottom one does say, see page 4 for frosting directions, but that takes you to one of their packet mixes where you uh, take two teaspoons of warm water and mix until smooth, spread on cake with spatula. So you have to have their mix. So we don't have that. So I'm just going to roll with what I see here. Six uh, teaspoons of flour. So let's get started. Six teaspoons of flour. Well, we'll use theirs. It's going to get dirty, so... I'm counting. Four, five, and six. Okay, that's good. We're done with that. And it's four teaspoons of sugar. So we'll bring in our sugar. All right. One. It's basically saying blend it all together, or put it all together and mix it. And then a quarter of a teaspoon 
of baking powder. So let's get that out. We've used that baking powder before. Okay, one teaspoon of the cocoa. Go back to the one that comes with the set. All right, three quarters of a teaspoon of shortening. So three quarters of one teaspoon. Now that one's dirty, so I'll grab another one. So it's not a full teaspoon, but approximately three quarters. So I will uh, have to use the back of this. And I expect some to stay on there, so that's why I put a little extra in there. All right. And a pinch of salt, which I have, one pinch, pinch. Mix until well blended. Let me get one of my wood spoons here. And then the next ingredient is going to be six teaspoons of milk. So they're doing these mixes, of course, without eggs. And then I'm putting this in a well-greased pan. Ooh, let me do this before I go any further. Get that oven warming up. So I will, uh, you'll see it just turn on in the back. Get it hot. Okay. There we go. I think by the time we get the pan greased and get this mixed, it should be ready. Okay, I think we're good there. So now we needed the six teaspoons of milk. Here we go. What I'll do is I'll put two in and then mix a little. And then do it a few times, three times there. So we'll do that and we'll mix it. It's happening. We're finally making the cake. You know, as we get to the newer ovens in this series, we'll start using the actual um, mixes, the easy bake mixes. They really started to change now, and it smells chocolatey. Okay, and then the last two. And I'm going to mix it a little bit better because I see lumps. One, two. Okay. Now as those ovens heat up, you can kind of smell the heat or just smell the plastic. Which I'm smelling now. Now this oven has a much bigger window on it, so we're going to get a much, uh, a much better view than the last oven. Good. Okay, so I think that's mixed until well blended. Then we added the milk, blend thoroughly, pour into well greased pan. Okay, I think we got most of the lumps out of there. I got some butter here. Let me take this bottom pan here. It says on all the pages, make sure you grease the pan, make sure you grease the pan. Now this doesn't say it makes multiple cakes. I'm guessing it's just going to make enough cake for this one. But we'll see when we pour it in. 
It doesn't tell you any other thing about second second pans or use up the mix for anything. Okay, there we go. Let me grab my little spatula. That might be able to scrape it better. There you go. Not much better, but okay. I think we're good. Let me reset up here, get the oven set up, and then we'll uh, put it in the oven. Okay, here we go. As you can see, this one has a much nicer window. I'm going to push the pan in, and it kind of goes up a little higher than the other oven. So there you go. I'm going to let it uh, bake for 12, what did it say? 12 to 15 minutes. So timer is starting right now. And I will check back and, uh, you know, we'll see how it progresses. Okay, check it in now. It's been about uh, seven or eight minutes, so we're uh, moving right along. It looks like it's uh, raising up pretty good. And uh, we'll just uh, check back and we get a little closer to it being near the end of its time. All right, so there's about a minute left, and it's looking pretty good. I can see from here the edges are looking a little browner than the inside, so I'm guessing it's pretty close to being done. So by the time I reshift the oven and get set to push it out, it should be ready. Okay, so here we go. I've changed the angle slightly, and I look pretty neat in here because you've got the glow of the light bulbs. Look like it's a old-fashioned stove or a stove with the hood and the lights on. So I thought that was a pretty cool uh, look to it. So let me push these in now, and this will slide into the what they would consider the warming section. But I'm going to bypass that and go right to the outside, so you see it come out. And there you go. And now I can check it with a toothpick. I have to, I guess I can, you know, put it back in. So we'll just give it a quick check and see if it sticks. And it's looking good because it's coming off the edges. I would say that's pretty good. Nothing on the toothpick. All right, so I'm going to let that cool a little bit. And while that's cooling, I'm going to start the second recipe. So I'm going to make a little room here and get started. Okay, here we go. I was going to get started in the next recipe. I wanted to show you a nice close-up of the cake. It's cooling down really nice. It's got great texture to it. I just got to decide on the frosting, so we'll set that off to the side and get going on this next one. And this calls for, it's the oatmeal fruit bars. That's what I decided. It's something different, and uh, we'll give it a shot. It says six teaspoons shortening or soft butter. So we'll do that now. And, you know, measuring, I'm going to be close, but a lot sticks on the spoon. It doesn't say level or not, so I'm going to be close. Four, five, and I'm leaving some on there, and six. I'll level that one. And the next is brown sugar, and you blend those two together. And it doesn't say, you know, compact the brown sugar. A lot of times when you measure out brown sugar, you compact it, but we'll just go for it. They don't tell you, so we're just going to... Oh, what was it? Six teaspoons. We almost did a tablespoon. Okay, so six. Oh, I like this little spatula. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay, that's a nice healthy amount. Six. And blend this together. I'm gonna grab my, brought in my spatula. Got most of the brown sugar chunks already broken up. Once snuck in there. So what am I gonna do with the frosting? Maybe I could just go check online for a quick chocolate cake frosting and adapt it to this. Hmm? That's probably what I'll do. Got a frosted cake, right? 
Okay, so that's pretty well blended. Now a quarter cup of flour. Let's go for it. Quarter cup. Okay, you know, I'll just mix that in. Probably could have added it in small increments. You know, everybody's got their techniques. This is a pressed cookie, so I'm going to press it into the cookie pan or the baking pan. Okay, looks like I can get more ingredients in there. And it was an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda. So I have quarters here. I'll just take a rough guess here. Half of that. And then another pinch or a dash of salt. Dash. And then three tablespoons quick rolled oats. Now that's tablespoons. I'll put this recipe down below. One, two, got some big oats here. Three. Nice. So that's why they call it oatmeal fruit bars. You gotta have lots of oatmeal in there. Uh, mix well. Okay. I don't think it's going to be a dough, but it's going to be something that I can form and press. But, you know, you want to get it mixed good. So it's all incorporated. Come on, get that in there. Get in there. I'm going to eat you later. What do you think? Looking pretty good, huh? Can't wait to try this one. You almost think you want to put cinnamon in there, right? Or something else? Okay. All right, so next. Place one half the mixture in a well-greased pan. Okay, so let me get my pan. And uh, let me get my butter to grease it. Okay, got it here. Well-greased pan, all right. It doesn't say it rises or anything, so we'll see. All right, so press it in there, half the mixture. Let's see. Let's kind of divide it here in the bowl, huh? I would say that's pretty close. and press into the pan. What does it say? It's here. Uh, press down in the pan with fingertips or back of spoon. I like fingertips better. Okay, yeah, see it's got like a flaky kind of dough consistency to it. Let me see if I can get my spoon in there. Nice. Okay, so that was about half, and it looked pretty even. Maybe add a little bit more here and over here. That looks good. A little more there. Okay, good. Then, oops, dropped a pan. Uh, spread with two tablespoons strained baby food, applesauce, or marmalade. Okay, two tablespoons. Tablespoons. There we go. There's one. Oh, I just had enough. Two. That looks good. Let's clean this off. I think I'll use this as my spreader for this, right? And then what does it say? Use remaining half of a second batch of cookies. Oh, so I can make cookies with it. Well, I guess I'll try that. I have two more pans, I might as well. Does this look good to you? 
leave it in the comments if you're liking this recipe. Okay, there we go. All right, little cleanup here, like I always do. Get the oven into position, and then we'll slide it in. All right, I just wanted to show you actually putting a tray in this oven, because it's a little different than the other one. The other one kind of rested on the bottom. This one goes up a layer, and then you just slide it in. And while I'm here, we'll check with that in just a second. I thought, well, let's just, as you can see now, I've got my car's timer back. Just couldn't trust that last timer for some reason. It wasn't working right every time. And uh, just didn't trust it. So grease the pan like they've said. But these are going to be cookies, so I don't have to worry about the edges as much. Ooh, that's a lot. A little too much. Alright. And then I have that leftover dough. Remember that? I'm just going to take a little bit in my hands. That's probably what I would have wanted to have done from the beginning. And shape it into a cookie. Now, I don't know if it's going to spread or not. Looks like I can make a few, but we'll do these. Kind of shaping it like that. There you go. So I'll do those in just a second. So let me uh, show you inside the oven now. Okay, so here we go. I uh, The tray's in there. So now we're looking at this uh, oatmeal fruit bars. So after 10 minutes, I'll slide that out and slide the cookies in. So I'm just going to let the camera run. Some of them will get edited out. I'm uh, not going to do the whole 10 minutes, and then uh, we'll check back. All right, we have about three minutes left, so I will check back when it's all done, and we'll push in the cookies. I added the third one to the tray, and I put a little bit of the uh, apple on the top of them, uh, two of them, so we'll see how those turn out. So we'll check back in about three minutes. All right, timer's gone off, so it's time to push the second tray through. And as you, ooh, bumped over, as you can see now, those are my cookies, so I'm going to give those, uh, let me reset my timer here. Instead of 10 minutes, I'll do them 8 minutes. And uh, we'll check back, and then uh, we'll go on to the frosting. Maybe I'll do that. I kind of found the recipe online. A recipe? Yeah, a recipe online. And uh, we'll just take a look at it and uh, probably cut it in half to actually get it, because we don't need a lot, so we'll come back and do that. All right, so I started, uh, actually took a recipe and I cut it in a third. There's the butter in there. And it was just uh, blend this together. And it said use a mixer or do it by hand. So I'm going to do it by hand. And as this incorporates here, I will uh, add the vanilla and I'll add the milk. And we're just going to kind of play it by ear and see how it goes. Really simple directions. Could use a little bigger bowl, but I wanted to use the one that came with the set. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then a little bit of vanilla. They actually call for one and a half teaspoons, so I really I could just put one teaspoon should be good. And then on the milk side, it originally called for one to two tablespoons. So let me just do a full tablespoon here. We'll mix it up. It might need more or less. You just gotta set adjust as needed. I do have, well, the timer's gonna go off real soon for those cookies, so I gotta get moving here. Then I'll frost the cake and we'll check it all out and taste it. There we go, now we're getting a good frosting. Smells good anyway. Oopsie. Okay, so I need to push everything out. That looks a nice consistency. I'll have to work that just a little bit more, I think, but I think we're good. Yep, it's pretty firm, but yet still soft. Okay. Good. Now let's get these pans pushed through. Be right back. Okay, I'm all set actually. I didn't realize it, but when you pull this out, the tray comes with it, so you don't actually need that 
third tray to push, but I need to move my last tray through. And since my cake never made it out of its holder, I'll just give it a quick push. And I'll take this one off. Let me get another one of my fancy new hot pads that I found. And then we'll see if we can get that last one out without having to use a, another pan. So there you go. There's the cookies. Ooh, I don't think they're done. I'm going to put them in just a little bit longer, I think. Here, what I'll do is grab one of my little hot pads that I have. Come back, take a closer look at it. They seem a little soft. I did cut it down a little bit, so let me uh, put them back in. But that gives me time now to straighten up. I have to straighten up. There's just not enough room for me here to do another three minutes. we go. So we'll frost the cake. I got three minutes there. I think we'll just run with it. All right, so this one does look done. We'll get the cake in here. It looks good though. I think it does look good. Let's get some frosting. I do want to move it to another plate, so let me grab a plate. Hold on a second. Okay, that didn't take long. And let's get it out of here. I'm running out of room. That's pretty good. There. Now if I wanted to make two, I can make a double layer, right? Let's see. Let's see if this is going to work. I think it's going to work. Now, how do you like your frosting? Super thick? Do you like buttercream frosting? Let's get those sides. I like frosting all the way around. Wasn't really planning on frosting. It was a last minute change. There we go. Ooh, that's nice. Not sure I'll keep it on this plate, so I might do some little bit of cleanup when I'm all set here. There. What do you think about that? If I had one of those fancy cake twirling stands. Do they make that for Easy Bake? I have to check. Okay. So that is my cake and that is that. So let me really get clean up here. By that time I'll have everything out and we'll give it a taste. Well, I'm all set. It didn't take much here. I actually just had to get a cup of milk and who better than to bring in with the Pillsbury Doughboy, right? This is set. I do need to push that last tray through. So I will do that. And then I will grab it here and turn off my oven. So I'll set these cookies right. Ooh, they do smell good. I smell the oats now. They baked a little bit longer. Unplug the oven. And what do we want to cut first? Well, I didn't do anything else to the cake, so it seemed the frosting held up pretty good. Let's cut this and have a piece of this. After all that cooking, you want to eat something. I'll cut it pie shaped. Okay. And I will try this here. I have my fork. I'm taking another bite because I like it. I like oats and those kinds of Desserts, hmm, it's good. The apple's good. I think I might just have another piece. Actually, you could just take the whole thing like that and eat it right off the fork. Let me try it instead of cutting it up. 
Mm, that's a nice bite. It's good. Let's try. Let's cut the cake. I use my little tool. I do want a sip of milk though. Ah, rinse the palate. I'll do pie cakes. Pie cake cut. What do you think? Look at that. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? For my first attempt, let's give it a shot. Ooh, the frosting's good. The frosting really overpowers the cake, but the cake is soft and came out really good. So overall, I'm pretty happy. The cookies are still don't hold together very well. So I can scoop one in to show you. So they're crispy. Let's give one a taste without the apple. Ooh, warm. Warm is really good. I'm happy with both recipes. I think they worked out really good. So for this oven, 1969, pretty successful. The next oven we're gonna move it to is in the 70s. So we'll show you that next. And again, if you like this kind of stuff and you want to see more videos in this series, look in the description for a playlist, or you could also search our channel. And thanks for watching. Later! If you want to find this item, click the link in the description area below the video. You can also watch more videos in this series by clicking here. Thanks for watching! And always remember, if you see a lucky penny, pick it up!